Hello class, this is section 2.2 and in this video we are going to discuss linear operators. So for this class, uh, when we say an operator, we mean a function of functions. And I, I think it's best to demonstrate this by an example. And this is something that you've seen before, the differential operator. And it's normally written down as a capital D or as a DX, as we're going to do here. So this is a function that when you feed it a function, it spits out that function's derivative. What I mean precisely is df of fx is equal to the derivative of that function with respect to x. A concrete example, dx of sine is just going to be cosine and dx of x cubed is just going to be 3x squared. So you feed it a function and it spits out another function. That's what an operator is. Now more useful for our purposes would be the heat operator. This is an important example. And what this does is that it allows us to express the heat equation in a different way. So the heat operator is written down as L and it takes a function u and it takes the partial derivative of it with respect to t and subtracts k times the second partial derivative with respect to x. So this looks an awful like, like a lot like the heat equation. In fact, if you write down LU equals zero, this is the heat equation. So this operator gives us another way to write down our heat equation. So let's talk about some properties of operators that are important to us. The most important property is something called linearity. And we say that an operator is linear if it behaves sensibly with addition, subtraction, and constant multiplication. And what do I mean by that? Um, precisely, I mean that we have an operator that if we feed it constant times a function, we can pull out the constant for all constants C. And also that if we have two functions that are added together, we can split them out like so. So this is what it means that it behaves sensibly. And this also works for, for subtraction. So if you want to subtract two functions, we can pull it out like that too. And in, part, in, uh, in particular, one important property is that L of a linear combination of two functions, u on x plus c2 u to x, you can write this down as c1 L u on x plus c2 L u to x. So if you want to check for linearity, this is more or less what you're always checking for, that you can pull out constants and you can pull out plus and minus signs the way that you expect to do. Now let's look at an example. Is dx linear? So let's check it. If it's linear, it will satisfy this equation. So let's, let's see if it is. Now dx c1 u1x plus c2 u2x is equal Two. And what's dx again? dx is a derivative. So it's a derivative of c1 u1x plus c2 u2x. Now remember that the derivative does behave nicely with respect to addition, so you can just pull it out this way. ddx c1 u1x plus ddx c2 u2x. And also, you can pull constants in and out derivatives. So you can pull the constant out here. But 
we know that the derivative of u1x can be written down as c1 dx u1x and the derivative of u2x can be written down as c2 dx u2x. So because this is true, and this is true for all functions, u1x, u2x that are differentiable, we imp this implies that dx is linear. Right, because we have this equation, we know that the dx behaves nicely with respect to constant multiplication, and it behaves nicely with respect to addition and subtraction. 